speak to me again speak to me again i want to hear you speak i want to hear your voice speak to me again touch that particular area of my life speak through your servant let your word come to me alive please if you're outside please and you are for this meeting you need to come in now thank you lord in jesus name we pray somebody say a louder amen like a master degree holder mnc for that matter shout a louder amen, amen. a master over situations and circumstances rise to your feet and shout a louder amen, amen. listen to me you may not have the worldly certificate but in the spirit you are a master i didn't hear you talk to me somebody say i am a master amen that's why we are here we are here to learn we are here to be enlightened amen we are here to be inspired by the time we'll be returning home returning to our ministry returning to our families whatever the devil may want to bring on our way we'll kick it away praise god hallelujah once again pastor Ron, we want to thank you for that message because of emotion so many things the devil has destroyed in our hand but after this meeting we are taking them back in the name of jesus hallelujah praise god and you told us i will never forget if anyone says he can't control his emotion it's a lie of the devil we can control it praise god first timothy 1 7 says god has not given us the spirit of fear but of power of love and of sound mind somebody say i can control my emotion i can handle the situation i am on top of the situation so whatever you may be going through you are on top by the special grace of god and by the help of the holy spirit praise god are you ready now are you ready now the man that first spoke to us is the senior pastor of Potter's house in Michigan. His wife was here last uh, year. Uh, yes, in 2018. Is it 2018? Is it 2018? Oh, okay. And this year again, himself and his wife, they'll be coming back in August. <laughs> Amen. Right now, we want to listen to another senior pastor from Jesus Center. From Jesus Center. Amen. In Illinois, in the United States of America. Please join me as you rise to your feet. Let's give honor to God and the bearer of his word, Pastor Kirk Parker. If you want to put your hands together, put it together for Jesus. God bless you. Amen. Thank you. You can be seated. It is such a blessing to be with you, um, to sense your joy in the Lord, to sense your hunger in the Lord. Uh, and this, this is already going to be, this has already been good, but it's going to continue to be so because the Lord is moving among us and we're grateful to him. Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for this people. Thank you for each heart and soul that is here, each heart and soul that you have formed, that you have a plan for, that you are working in. And I just pray belief and faith into them, Lord, that they would open up their hearts, that they would trust you, that they would continue to follow you. And Lord, when they get down the road and they don't know where you are, that they would turn around and, and find you, Lord. And they would follow you all the days of their life. I pray that they would finish the race that you have for them well, that they would fulfill the destinies that you have for them. And we thank you, Lord, 
that by your Holy Spirit that we are able to do just that. Thank you, Jesus. It's in your powerful name that we pray. Amen. We want to be people that are led by the presence of the Lord. But one of the things that sometimes gets into our way of being led by the presence of the Lord is that we feel pressure as leaders. We feel pressure to make things happen. And if you're going to be a leader, it takes some confidence, confidence to lead other people. But sometimes my confidence can get in the way of waiting on the Lord. Because just like King Saul, I feel pressure. I feel pressure that says I need to lead people. I need to lead people and people want to see things happen. Does anybody here want to see a move of the Lord? Amen. We want to see a move of the Lord. We want to see revival. We want to be persistent at that. And we're going to look at a scripture that talks about being persistent and seeking the Lord. But at the same time, we've got to understand that God is God. I am not God. And therefore, even though I will continue to seek Him, I want to wait on him and wait on his leading and I don't want to be like King Saul and when I start to feel pressure and others are looking for a move of God I don't want to try to make something happen because in God's presence we do not have to make something happen God's presence makes things happen Amen. So I want to seek His presence. I don't want to seek the things of God. I want to seek God Himself. And when I seek God Himself, I will see the things of God happen. The first scripture I want to share with you comes out of the book of Matthew. It's going to be in the seventh chapter. It's on the... Uh, famous Sermon on the Mount that Jesus gives. Uh, it's a very familiar verse. And um, beginning in beginning in verse 7, chapter 7 of verse 7, and I'm going to read through verse 10. Jesus said, keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking, and you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who seeks, finds. And to everyone who knocks, the door will be open. Now I'm going to pause right there before we move on. I want you to let those words settle into your heart. Do not stop seeking. Do not stop asking. Ask the Lord for that move because He wants to give that move. Ask the Lord for that revival. He wants to give that revival. Ask the Lord that He would move inside of you because He wants to do that. But I want you to hear this. You have a loving Father that is not going to give you something that's going to hurt you. You have a loving Father that is not going to give you something that's going to hurt you. I want you to listen to what he says right after that. He says, you parents, if your children ask for a loaf of bread, do you give them a stone instead? Or if they ask for a fish, do you give them a snake? Of course not. So if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give good gifts to those who ask Him? The Father wants to give you good gifts, but listen, He does not want to give you things that will hurt you. If my young child, who is four years old, comes to me and says, Dad, I want to have the keys to the car because I want to go drive around town. Now, 
I want my son to experience that. I want my son to experience what it is to drive. But is my four-year-old ready to drive the car around town? No, he is not. And so that's why the Lord says, keep on asking. Because the Lord is preparing your heart. God didn't give the kingdom to King David when he was anointed as a teenager. Because King David was not ready for the kingdom as a teenager. Instead, the Lord anointed him and he said, this is what I'm going to do to you. I'm going to give you the kingdom. And when Joseph was young, he gave him a dream. And he said, Joseph, the day's going to come when your own family is going to bow down to you. But did God give Joseph that vision when he was just a boy? He gave him the vision, but did he fulfill it? No. Why? Because he loved Joseph. He said, Joseph, I'm going to prepare your heart. And so if my son who's four comes to me and says, Dad, I want the keys to the car, I'm going to say, Son, I want to give you the keys to the car, but I'm going to prepare you first. I'm going to prepare you so that when I give you those keys, you are a good driver and you can take people where they need to go and you're not going to hurt anybody and you're not going to hurt yourself. I'm going to give you those keys, but I am going to wait until you are ready. We get in our heads that we're ready now. My four-year-old may think he's ready, but he's not ready. Sometimes I think, Father, I'm ready for a move of God. Let me see it. But the Father has told me over and over, it's coming, son, but you're not ready for the fullness yet. Because sometimes I'm ruled by my emotions, as Pastor Ron said. Sometimes I'm not patient. Sometimes I steal from the glory of God and I look for my own glory. That's my flesh. But I don't want to do that. I don't want to steal the glory of the Lord. I don't want to be impatient. I don't want to be ruled by my feelings. I want to move as Jesus moved. I want to minister to people and I want to meet their needs and I don't want to use people for my own needs because that's who Jesus is. And how many know that the Bible says that you are being transformed into the image of Christ? And so keep on asking, keep on praying. But you know what? Wait on it. It doesn't mean it's not coming. It's going to take time. David was a young man when he was anointed. He was 35 years old before he was ever even given part of the kingdom. And even then, he wasn't given the full kingdom. It took years later before the full kingdom was given to him. And even then, when the full kingdom was given to him, did he always handle it the right way? No. Sometimes he didn't. And that just shows you that he certainly wasn't ready when he was a younger man. Moses. How old was Moses before he began to lead the people? Moses was over 80 years old before he began to lead the people. Sometimes we think that when we're in our 20s, we're ready. Maybe when we're in our 30s, we're ready. Or how about 40s? Surely by the time we're 40, we're ready. When Moses was 40, God said, leave this place and go take care of those sheep over there. You're going to spend about 40 years taking care of those sheep. And then, after you're 80 years old, I'm going to come and I'm going to appear and you're going to see my presence. And my presence is going to lead you and things are going to happen that if you had five lifetimes you couldn't make happen because it's going to happen because of the presence of the Lord. Leaders, we must wait on the presence. We must keep seeking because he will answer. But here's one of our temptations. And we see this in ourselves. We see this in the church. Our temptation is to make something happen when the Lord is not making it happen. 
instead of waiting and praying and, and saying, Lord, what else is it that you have to show me? Lord, how else do you have to prepare me? Instead, we just keep pushing. Make it happen. Make it happen. And if it's not happening, we try to make it appear to other people that it's happening. We try to make it appear to other people that it's happening. I want to share another scripture with you. This one comes out of the book of Isaiah. Isaiah, Old Testament. 50th chapter of Isaiah. In the 10th verse. 50th chapter of Isaiah in the 10th verse. The last two verses I'm going to read say this. Who among you fears the Lord and obeys his servant? If you are walking in darkness without a ray of light, trust in the Lord. You ever feel like you're in darkness? You ever feel like you're not seeing the presence of God? What are we to do? Trust in the Lord. And rely on your God but but watch out but watch out you who live in your own light and warm yourselves by your own fires this is the reward you will receive from me you will soon fall down in great torment Moses saw the fire of the Lord. Moses and the people of God were led by the fire of the Lord. The word says that during the day the cloud would lead them and at night it would rest over the tabernacle and it would appear as fire. The fire of the Lord would lead them. The fire represented the presence of God. In Acts, the second chapter, when the Holy Spirit comes down on his people, we see tongues of fire representing the presence of God. We want to see the fire of God because it represents the presence of God. But Isaiah gives us a warning. What if you're not seeing the fire of God the way that you want to see it? What if the people are crying out and saying, let me see the fire of God? What if the pastor down the road is saying, oh, we're experiencing the fire of God? What are you going to do as a leader if you're not experiencing the fire of God? Are you going to make your own fire? Or are you going to wait on the Lord? The temptation is to make our own fire. Maybe you've seen the fire of the Lord before. And so when it doesn't come, you act the same way you did when you saw the fire. But the problem is, it's not the presence of the Lord leading you. You're just reenacting what you saw when the fire came. You see what I'm saying? And we do it because we feel the pressure. We feel pressure from pastors at other churches. We feel pressure from people in the church. They're saying, if I don't feel the fire, I'm going down the road. I'm going to the other church. I want to feel the fire. Well, I want to feel the fire too. I want to feel the presence. But I want to feel it so bad, I'm not going to make up my own fire. Because the Lord says, when I make my own fire, uh-uh, what I bring is judgment. The sons of Aaron, the sons of Aaron, in the book of Leviticus chapter 10, verse 1, it says that they put coals of fire in their incense burners and sprinkled incense over them. In this way they disobeyed the Lord by burning before him the wrong kind of fire, different than he had commanded. They said, God, we don't like the way you're doing it. God, we got a better plan. That's what King Saul said. He got tired of waiting on the Lord. 
He got tired of waiting on Samuel. I'm going to take care of this sacrifice myself because the people are saying they want some movement. They're starting to get disappointed. They're starting to wonder if God is really leading us. And I'm afraid they're going to scatter. So I'm going to make it happen on my own. Leaders, that is our temptation. To make it happen on our own. But when we make it happen on our own, we are blocking the true fire. The true fire of the Lord. I want more than anything to experience the true fire of the Lord. And so I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait for His leading. And if the fire's not going the way that I want it, I'm not going to pretend like it's happening. Instead, I'm going to wait on the presence of God. And I'm going to wait on the presence of God. And I'm going to ask that God would give me vision to show me what He's doing. And I'm going to follow Him. And I'm going to pray in faith for the things that He is doing. The Son of God. The Son of God, Scripture declares, could not do things in and of Himself. It says that he could only do what he saw the Father doing. If the Son of God could only do what he saw the Father doing, who are we to try and make things happen? We have got to wait on the Lord just as Jesus did. I want to look at that scripture also. It's found in John chapter 5 verse 19. The Gospel of John, chapter 5, verse 19. Jesus says, I tell you the truth. The Son can do nothing by Himself. And He was sinless. He was sinless, and He could do nothing by Himself. I've been washed in the blood. I've been baptized by the Holy Spirit in fire. There is nothing that cannot be accomplished through me because God dwells in me. Jesus was God himself, and yet he could do nothing by himself. He could only do what he saw the Father doing. Brothers and sisters, we are no different. He said he does only what he sees the Father doing. Whatever the Father does, the Son also does. For the Father loves the Son and shows Him everything He is doing. Brothers and sisters, the Father loves us. And He wants to show you what, you're, what He's doing. But here's the problem. When I'm making my own fire, I'm busy with it. I'm focused on it. Sometimes fires aren't easy to make. Right now, Pastor Ron shared that in the U.S. where we live, it's snowing. It's cold. I have a fireplace in my house, and so I like to make fires. Sometimes that fire is a lot of work. It takes work to make a fire. And when I'm focused on that fire, it's hard to do anything else because I want to make sure it gets going. Well, when we're focused on a fire in the church that's our own fire, we're not watching the Father to see what the Father is doing. We're saying, God, I want to make something happen. Well, you know what? God wants to take you through trials. He wants to teach you through trials. What if somebody had come to Joseph when Joseph was in prison before he met the cupbearer and the baker and they said I want to pray that God gets you out of here today well if God had taken him out of the prison before the cupbearer and the baker came he would have never fulfilled his destiny so when somebody comes to you as a leader and they say I'm going through a trial would you pray that I get deliverance today May I suggest you stop. You stop and you step back and you say, Father, what are you doing here? What are you doing in this child that you love? 
Do you want them delivered today? Or are you waiting to fulfill a destiny for them? And maybe you want me to pray that they would continue on until the day of their destiny when you have appointed that they would be delivered and they would fulfill their destiny just like Joseph and they would rise up to the place of power that you have for them and you would be used by them in a mighty way that would impact the people that you want to impact. Do you see the difference? Instead of just saying, God, deliver them right now. And going on and on. Because it kind of sounds like the first scripture we read in Matthew, where he says, keep on asking, keep seeking. But that's not what he's talking about. He's talking about pursuing the things that God is calling us to pursue. If you're pursuing something that God has not called you to pursue, or you're asking for something before the time that God wants to give it to you. If you're four years old in the spirit and you're asking for the keys to the car, if God loves you, he's not going to give it to you. He's going to wait until your heart is ready. But if your pride rises up and says, I'm ready now, you're going to block your destiny. You're going to block your destiny. And if you say, I'm going to find a way to get the keys, you're going to end up hurting yourself and you're going to end up hurting others because God loves you. As humans, we love our kids here. But as that scripture in Matthew says, it doesn't compare to the love of the Father. We're not going to give our keys to the four-year-old. The father who genuinely loves us, he's certainly not going to do it. God is not withholding anything from you that would bless you right now. He's withholding the things from you because he wants to bless you. Because he loves you. I've seen it over and over in my life. Things that I have prayed for. He withheld from me until I was ready. I prayed for a home when I first entered the ministry. I wanted to have my own home. And I prayed for years and years. And the Lord didn't give it to me. And I started to feel like God didn't love me. But God was doing a work in my heart. He wanted to get me to the point that when He gave me the blessing... My heart didn't start looking at the blessing and worshiping the blessing. But instead, my heart would worship the Lord and say, thank you. Because he knew if he gave it to me too early, I'd worship the blessing. And then I'd say, give me more, Lord. Instead of saying, Lord, who can I bless through what you've given me? The Lord wants to give you more finances than you have. But He's waiting till you are ready. Because He doesn't want you to just focus on yourself with it. He wants you to bless others with it. But He's waiting till you're ready. And so, if you have it on your heart to pray that God would expand your tent of influence, that He would expand your resources, keep on praying. But know this, God's going to wait till you're ready. And so while you're waiting, ask the Lord, Lord, what are you forming in my heart? Lord, how can, I, how can I come along in the process and surrender to you? Because we want to walk as Jesus walked. And as Jesus walked, he was able to heal the sick. He was able to cast out the demonic. And we want to walk in those things. But you know what? The Lord had to walk with the Father many years before He was released into His ministry and the power that He was. He had to walk with the Lord. But Jesus was ready when it came. The Lord is going to move through me and the Lord is going to move through you if, if we will be persistent if we will keep going after him and we won't try to pretend that something's happening when it's not. 
And when someone comes and says, pray for me, we're just going to stop and we're going to say, Lord, how do you want me to pray? And if he says, I want to heal them, we're going to believe and we're going to command it and it's going to happen. But it's going to happen when God says, I'm going to do it. Because that's being led by his presence. David waited on his presence. And when David raided on his presence, he conquered the enemy over and over and over. Armies that were larger than he was. God conquered them through him because he waited on the Lord. When all of his brothers were up at the house and he's all alone out tending the sheep, he just waited on the Lord. He allowed the Lord to use him out there. When the bear and the lion came, he attacked them and they ran away. Who was there to see it? Nobody. But God was preparing his heart. His brothers were up at the house thinking he's a nobody. He's out there with the sheep because he's a nobody. But the bear and the lion were running from him. And he was waiting. He was waiting on the day that he would be called to the house. And the prophet of God would say, you're the man. Because you've got a heart after mine. I'm making you the king. And I'm giving you the kingdom. Because he waited on the Lord. Brothers and sisters, if we will wait on the Lord... He will give us the kingdom. We will see a move of God. We will see a move of God in Nigeria. We will see a move of God in the U.S. We will see a move of God that spans Africa and around the world because we wait on the presence. We don't try to make it happen ourselves. And God can trust us with the keys to the kingdom. Because we wait on the presence and we only move when the presence moves. Brothers, it can happen, but we can't go out on our own. We've got to wait. God, thank you that the power of you is going to move in Nigeria. Thank you that the power of the Lord is going to move on these brothers and sisters. Thank you, Lord, that they're going to keep asking and keep seeking and keep knocking and they're not going to give up, but they're going to wait on you because they know you are a good father. And they're going to walk as Jesus walked and they're going to look for you to move and when you move, they're going to see mighty moves of you happen. They're going to see healings. They're going to see demons cast out, Lord. And they're going to see waves of people coming to you because they wait on you and they are faithful and they can be trusted with the keys to the kingdom. Thank you, Lord, that that is who we are in you. Thank you, Lord, that we live in resurrection power because we live for your fellowship. We don't live for your blessings. We don't live for your works. We live for you and your presence. We want to have fellowship. We want to have intimacy with you. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. In the powerful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Bless you. Your hands together for Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Are you blessed? How many of you know that it is true? That many times, because we are under pressure, because we are under pressure, we want to make things happen by ourselves. Is it true? Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. Pastor Parker, you have just hit the nail on the head. We are blessed. God bless you very good. Amen. Before we go into questioning and, and, and answering, please help us tell those who are upstairs to come down now. Let's come together now. So that we can listen to question and answer. Yes, let them come now. Praise God. You know, you read the scripture in Isaiah 50. 
he said those of us who are walking in darkness we should trust the lord am i right then the scripture says those who have kindled fire for themselves they let them walk in their own fire but at the end of the day they will lie down in torment that will not be our portion i want us to pray with that scripture every fire that i've kindled for myself lord put them off that fire is not going to help us amen we have tried to kindle fire by ourselves try to make this happen by ourselves and it's blocking the presence of god blocking our destiny blocking those things that god wants to do in our lives praise god maybe if we have allowed the holy spirit to lead us our life will have been more better than this our ministry will have been more better than this let's cry to god and say lord every fire that i've kindled for myself and by myself put it off put it off put it off today open your mouth and speak to god every fire that i've kindled by myself for myself lord i don't need it again put it off Let's speak to God very well. This is what God is telling us this morning. Until we allow God to do his work, no man can do the work of God by himself. It is him that worketh in us, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Ni oruko Jesu ni agbadura. In Jesus name we pray. Ni oruko Jesu ni agbadura. I like you to pray this one. Out to badura yi. If you like you can rise you can rise to your feet. Ti aba fe ale dide lori ese wa. If you don't want to trouble yourself you can remain sitting there. Ti a ba se fe yora wa lenu ale wa lori ijoko sibe. What am I doing now? That is blocking your presence in my life. What am I doing now? Lord, we pray. 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 Lord, we Anything that I'm doing now, Uncle Timon Shalawa Lawa Bay, blocking your presence. He don't do a liar, in my life, Ninua Yemi, in my family, Ninui Dilemi, in my ministry, Ninui Shiro, Father Lord, I surrender to you. All who am a Jaware for, take it away. Mukuro, take it away. Mukuro, take it away. Mukuro, take it away. Mukuro, I surrender to you. Mojo, I don't want to make things happen by myself. Me of Fakio, come and shell any passara. I surrender to you, Holy Spirit. Mojo, make it happen by yourself. Jacob, my shell, Furare, make it happen by yourself. Jacob, shell, Nipasa. I no longer want to walk under pressure. Me of Emma, she shall abate a Boruma. I want to be led by you. Mofak, Tony, Walla. Open your mouth and pray to God. Lie no record, but dress your lawn. Thank you, Father. Baba, say in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. And so shall it be in the name of the Father. Amen. And of the Son. Amen. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's jam our hands together as we take our seat. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, we 
we want to recognize the presence of the Pentecost or the Christian Association of Nigeria that are here. Afe Moriri, we want be a war, a bogway, a job, bogwa war, a rato so Christianic war. A cojok by Johnny Bagbo, a cojok by Gon, a Johnny Bagbo. We want to appreciate you. Afe Moriri, wherever you are, Nibiki Tiabawa. If you're a member of Khan, just wave your hands and shout hallelujah. A Jawaki, a Sike, hallelujah. God bless you. We appreciate your coming. Alone, your book for ye, a Moriri, we want ye. We appreciate you. God bless you. Members of Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria that are here. I want all my job. Pentecostal Church. So We know that PFN is under camp. And we understand that there's some PFN that came all the way from uh, uh, under this. Uh, in this, uh, what do you call it now? A province. Like I want Ikola Iluma. Wherever you are, just wave your hands. Oh, great. Put your hands together for Jesus. Thank you very much. You are most welcome. Now, PFN under Meron. Meron side. If you are here. Do we have PFN from Meron here? Okay. Glory to Jesus. All of us, you are most welcome. I'm sure you are blessed. Hey, that we are not answering me. Now, if you see this man of God some other time and you are invited, will you like to come? Thank you very much. God bless you. Now, you, we want to listen to question and answer now. If you want to write your own, please write it very quickly. And make it straight to the point. And if you want to ask your own, please, we like to listen to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Also, I want to tell you that Pastor. Paka is coming to Nigeria for the first time. Mofe Jako de Mimo Fufu, I will pay Pastor Paka. What was your relay in Nigeria? Please help me tell him we want you to come back again. A Joe, a Sophomore, a Fakia took Padawa. Amen. So we want you to come back again. Brother George is also coming to Nigeria for the first time. Brother George, I want to was your relay in Nigeria. Is an elder in Pastor Parker's church. And he's also a leader, the teacher of the main fellowship in the church, in the Sunday school. He's a leader. He's a mentor. I call him the Barnabas of our time. God bless you. Please help me tell him we want you to come back again. God bless you. So, how many of us have questions now? I'm going to give us number one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, seven. Okay, eight. Eight now. You know your number. Sit down. They want to take pictures with us. Yes. Oh yeah. Mo fe ya photo pelu wa je ka joko. Okay. Now those of us, number one, please come over. Eni akoko ko jade. My name is Ando Kontunde Samuel Andakan. No, no. You can come this way. Come this way. Uh huh. Give him the microphone. Good afternoon, ma. Good afternoon, sir. My name is Ando Kutunde Samuel Ganda Khan. Okay. My question is Psalm 30, verse 5b says, Weeping may endure tonight. So my question is, in the midst of darkness, in the midst of weeping, in the wilderness, ah, how can we really experience and understand the moving of God in order not to kindle our own fire for ourselves? 
ibere won won mu lati inu iwe samu e ori ogbon wi pe bi e kun tile pe di ale ayo yo de lo wuro pe nigbati a ba la won nkan yi koja bawo ni a se le mo kan lorun ti a o fi ni da ina ti wa fun ara wa okay you can take the pictures now so that take the photograph now Can we go on? Okay, thank you very much. That's the number one question. The question is, the Bible says, he said, the Bible says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Now, in times of challenges, in times of crisis, and when things are difficult, how can we do it that we will not kindle our own fire? We will wait for the law. We will not fall under pressure. Yeah. You have to make the decision that you that you are going to fear the Lord and not others. As you fear the Lord, that causes me not to step out of what He has for me. Fear of the Lord means to reverence and to reference the Lord. So I don't step out past what he says. It's a choice. I can choose to give in to the pressure or trust the Lord. You're here today because God is challenging us to trust him not to start our own fires. But only you can decide what you're going to do. We can see what scripture says, but ultimately it comes down to my decision. Will I trust him or will I try to do it myself? Pastor Kirk, do you have a did you want to add to this? Before Pastor Kirk, let me interpret. Now, only one son will be. Nigba ti abawa ni uwa koko be. Agbodo mo ipeno wa. Agbodo mo ipeno boya afe beke le uluwa. Tabi afe da ino arati wa. Oni ti abani ipeno tade nig beke le ni uluwa. Uluwa ano walo wa. Kude ni jeki pressure to umbo yen. Tabi awo ikoru ro kanye ko bori wa. So the scripture you shared talked about mourning, but then joy coming. I want you to think about Joseph when he was in prison. He was to remain there and not try to get out until God said it was time. Maybe you are serving in a church and things are not going the way that you want. And instead of remaining there, you want to go somewhere else. But God's saying, remain and trust me. Now, the other thing that we want to focus on, and brother or uh, Pastor Ron and I were talking about this earlier, we want to have joy by praising the Lord in the midst of our trials. We want to continue to push with praising. We don't want to give in to darkness and sadness and become apathetic. We want to praise the Lord even when our circumstances are not what we want. So the, the two that Pastor Ron talked about that were in jail, they praised the Lord while they were in jail. They didn't wait till they got out of jail to praise the Lord. They praised the Lord while they were there. And then when they were released, they continued to praise the Lord. 
So the way that we keep from making our own fire is we stay until the Lord says move. We praise the Lord. That's not making your own fire. Praising the Lord is what we're commanded to do. We praise the Lord in the midst of our circumstances and we don't try to change them until the Lord says, I'm coming to change them. Thank you. I want to Unti won so na ni wipe ninu ipe ni ja ti a ba la koja gege bi ran si olorun a gbodo ma yin olorun won wa si akawe paul ati sila pe nigbati won wa ninu tubu kaka ko gbe igbese saju olorun se tabi ko gba ironu tabi iporuru okan laye ipe se ni won yin olorun titi ti olorun so pe oya igbe igbese Praise the Lord. Yes, I, I want to ask a question bordering on what is happening in Nigeria. Um, right now, the church in Nigeria, the Christians, they are under pressure. The sons of the bond woman have now put the church under pressure. And the funny thing there is that the church is not planning, it's not praying. What would be your advice for the church now that the sons of the bond woman is out to slaughter the Christians and to extinguish Christians in this nation in order to install their dynasty? Um, is it going to be wrong or is it going to be that we are trying to kindle our own fire when we now take a position that will take our swords uh, along with our prayers and our faith in God to fight the children of the bond woman. Ibere awon arakunrin wa ni wipe ni bayi ti awon mo awon mo awon ara awon eni ti ki se ti Olorun to bere si lepa awon Christian bayi pe kini ki a se ni ru ipo bayi pe se Christian na ko mu ida la ida ati adura ni ko bere si fi jagun how should the church respond to persecution we should look at what we see in the early church in the book of acts they turned to god and put trust in god called out on god isaiah 60 says arise shine for your light has come and the glory of the lord has risen upon you darkness even deep darkness will cover the earth but it won't come near you and gentiles will come to the brightness of your shining and king to the brightness of your light what i believe the church needs to do is that we need to unite together not fight one another within the house of god begin to be the church manifesting the glory of god and i believe that will bring change to a culture that will bring transformation when the church begins to rise up united together and shine forth god's glory isaiah says that unbelievers will come to her god wants to see his glory manifested in nigeria he wants to manifest his glory through his church so my encouragement in u.s it's not that we have the sons of the bondwoman persecuting us so much but we have those who are pushing agendas that are opposed to the gospel of Jesus Christ. There are men marrying men, women marrying women. They are boarding babies before they're born and they're pushing that agenda. There's part of the church that is compromising, saying that it's all right to ordain people that are married to people of the same sex. We're in a war maybe not physical as it is here in some places but the answer is for the church to become like the church of acts that reflected the glory of god 
and we love the people who hate us and we reveal Jesus to the people that hate us so that their hearts are turned and they are born again and changed. Oh, to want a down one on we pay. I wa gege bi ara Christi a gbodo dide gege bi ara kan a gbodo ma so n gbogbo po ni iso kan ipe eyi ni omo oro ti Isaiah so wipe awon ala igbagbo yo sare wa sinu imole wa nigbati a ba n so n gbogbo ni iso kan ki se pe ka gbe ida tabi ko lati doju ko awon eyan yi ipe ki tun se idoju ko lati awon atodo awon eniyan yi nikan sugbon idoju ko wa kakiri e ton ta ko oro olorun gege bi oni gbagbo a gbodo mu iduro wa nitori pe o ti di dodo fun wa lati ri idoju ko our faith grows best under pressure and trials one of the things that we experienced in the US is that for years we did not experience pressure it was easy to say, I follow Jesus. There was no cost. And because of that, the church became weak. When there is pressure, the church grows. In the book of Acts, when Stephen was killed, when Stephen was killed, the church spread and the church grew. We grow under pressure and trials. I don't like pressure and trials, but I like what they do for my faith. Mm. The but is this. We must ask the Lord. Don't just go grab a sword. Ask the Lord. Lord, what do I do? Do I pray for the one coming at me? Do I try and love the one coming at me? Do I defend myself today? We ask the Lord every step of the way and we wait for Him. There is no formula. The Bible is stories about following God. The Bible is not a formula so that we memorize the formula and no longer have to talk to God. We ask God every step of the way but history has shown the church grows under pressure right now we are told that the fastest growing church in the world is in Iran and they are being pressured as well but that's where the church is growing the church is growing in China where they are being pressured when pressure comes the church grows but only when we ask the Lord, Lord, what do I do? How do I handle this? Thank you. Onti won e dawo awon arakunrin wa ni wipe labe ipe ni ja ni igbagbo ti ma n dagba. Wipe igbagbo wa gbodo a ma dagba nigbati a ba nla awon ipe ni ja koja. Wipe o rorun fun awon to be ni ilu America de wipe awon le so wipe mo fe tele Jesu mi o fe tele Jesu sugbon nitori ifo kan ba le itura yi pe o n gbogbo n di tutu ijo du tutu ko ri bo se ye ko ri pe ijo to dagbaju ijo to ni igbagbo to n dagba dara dara o je ijo ti o la opolopo ipe ni ja koja okay number 3 Praise the Lord. My name is Edun Uluwashion. I have two questions. Number one comes from um, Job chapter 2 verse 4. I would like someone to help me read. Then my second question. Um, actually, I have a medical um, issue. So the reason why I'm saying this is that um, there is someone that wants to win his heart for Christ. He's been telling me Jesus has come to die for himself. That not for him that he knows much about actually i have a medical um my sight so i've been praying that god should heal my eyes but we, he's my tenant so he used to tell me in the morning that i'm just wasting my time ringing bells singing doing family altar i said ah no i have faith in god that jesus will heal me so please what can i do to win this soul for christ that's my question Iberia Marakuri wa ni wipe bawo ni awon sele jere okan 
eni kan ti awon wa su fun wi pe ko fi aye re fun olorun sugbon eni ya wa ma toka awon tori pe awon ni ipe ni ja ninu oju eni na wa ma da won pada sinu ipe ni ja yi wi pe awon kan fi akoko won so foni ni pa gbigbadura ni pa diduro ninu olorun wi pe boya olorun ti won sin ko wo oju ipe mu ipe ni ja na kuro job 2:4 And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath will give for his life. Satan is said, Thou lua low, we pay our wolf, our at young bobo, ten yoni, or new fear I mire. Okay. First, I'll answer the scripture question. Here, Satan is saying that Job will deny God if. Satan touches him. So we see here Satan saying that Job will give up on God if he is attacked, if he has physical difficulty. But what do we know from the story? Job didn't. Job didn't. Job didn't. So what I see from this text is just the enemy saying he's going to attack Job, but then Job did not compromise. Satan can attack us. We are in a spiritual battle. I was praying one day and I kept thinking I was going to get to the place where there would be no warfare. And God spoke to me and he said this. He said, Ron, I've called you to a battleground, not a playground. This is a battleground. This is a place of spiritual warfare. We are fighting principalities, powers, wicked spirits, spiritual host of wickedness, Ephesians 6. We are fighting spirits, demonic forces. And what I see out of this text is Job didn't give in. You will be attacked. I will be attacked. But we're more than conquerors. We're overcomers through Jesus Christ. Amen. Answering the second question, what can we do as we're witnessing to someone? One, we pray for them. Two, we continue to sow the word in them. The truth about the word of God is that it never dies. It's eternal. When you sow the word into someone, even though they may not receive it at that point, that word continues to live in them. You heard me earlier say, I was an alcoholic. I was by myself, ready to take my life. And God reminded me what my Sunday school teacher told me when I was eight years old. The Word of God went with me all those years. I responded to what she said, and God changed my life. So as we witness to people and share Christ with them, if they don't receive, don't be discouraged. Continue to pray for them because God's word will work in them. We may not see it instantly. How many here have planted corn before or some other type of crop? When you put the seed in, did you get a harvest right away? No. The seed took time to germinate and to grow. So I encourage you, my brother, continue to share. Continue to speak the word in, continue to pray, and let God do the work in that young man's life. Amen. <laughs> ki a tesi waju lati ma gbadura fun ki a ma wo awon ti won so ka si tu tesi waju lati ma gbin oro olorun sinu won tori pe oro na ki ku won wa ran ti oni igba kan ti awon na la won kokon koja ti won fe gbe mi ara won sugbon olorun wa mu won ran ti oro ti oluko won ni sunday school so fun won oro yi lo wa ran won lo wa lati ma le gbe mi ara won amen amen uh, praise God. My name is Benjamin. 
I want to ask you a question. When you were talking about not letting your emotions get you, I, I'm a kind of person that I used to have issues with my emotions. And I've tried as much possible to make sure I try to contain my emotions. But I have some challenges. And challenges is that the people around me, they know my emotions. They know my temperament. They know this. But they're like devil incarnate. They try to get the beast out of you. Even though that's the fight, you try to ignore them. One happened to me of recent that I was trying to avoid, but I was forced to react. But sir, in that case, when you have issues with people around you, or, or when you're in that kind of a situation that the emotion has got to the stage that you don't have any option that to react, how do you react, or how are you able to react that it won't make you commit what you're not supposed to commit? It's a great question. If Pastor Jari was dead, could I say anything I wanted to him, would he respond to me? No. No. The Bible said, it's no longer I that liveth, but Christ that liveth in me. There's a point in our life as believers, we've got to realize all of my rights I gave up when I let Jesus become Lord of my life. So that's the foundation of not responding back because no longer is it about me. It's about Jesus living his life through me. So it comes from that foundation. Second point, building yourself up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. We need to be people that build up our inner man. If I don't take in the Word of God, if I don't pray in the Spirit, if I don't worship the Lord and enter in and connect with the Holy Spirit, I will eventually function in the strength of my flesh. I call it a daily office. I begin the day spending time with God, connecting to Him, asking Him to control my life. Throughout the day, then I pull aside and I refocus that my life isn't about me, it's about Jesus. And I, we call it recalibrating, refocusing my life into the Holy Spirit's control, into the Holy Spirit's control. And you may need to do that every hour as you learn to cause your life to no longer to be controlled by your emotions but controlled by the Holy Spirit you have to practice we call it practicing the presence of God so I slow down and I recognize he is here I submit my heart to his control and then I allow him to control me if there's people around me that are trying to get me to act in anger, there's certain times I need to put what I call a boundary in my life. That relationship is not a healthy relationship for me. So I'm going to separate from that relationship because it's leading me in a bad direction. There are times that relationships, you need to put a boundary there and say, that relationship, I need to set it aside because it's pulling me in a direction away from what Jesus has for me. And I'm going to find relationships that edify, build me up, that encourage me to walk by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> ni an gbe mo sugbon jesu lo gbe nu wa wipe asitu podo je ni to gba dura lopolopo ati wipe iba se po to ba ma mu ko to ba ma ma fa wa seyin ni gbogbo igba kuro ninu christi a gbodo mu ipala ba pe ka yera fun one distinction we want to make is that we don't want to kill our emotions 
We want to die to our flesh, not our emotions. But we don't want to be led by our emotions. Pastor Ron compared King Saul and King David. Read the Psalms. David was emotional. But David gave his emotions to the Lord. And as David gave his emotions to the Lord, the Lord turned his emotions into worship. So rather than responding to people out of emotions, he gave those emotions to the Lord, and then he was able to move forward, not without emotions, but with emotions that were surrendered to the Lord. Thank you. Number five. Yeah. Uh, we appreciate your support, your appreciation for this wonderful man of God. And uh, I'm ignited about your delivery, sir. That men of God are not waiting. They are putting their plans ahead of God's plans. And so things are not working the way it should work. A lot of things are emotionally driving and carnally driving in the church today. And so and there will be no way out. And the church will continue to be pushed back by the habitation of cruelty. Then we are not going to wait for you and Pastor John and your wonderful men to invite us. But on behalf of the poor Christians at Lekki Peninsula, I am Joshua Oluwashegwagbola from Apostolic Revivalist Movement, Lekki. We will want you to come with this wonderful kind of programs to that environment. And may the Lord bless your ministry, sir. This is my... Okay, thank you very much. I will give this to the. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. There was a question. No, it's not a question. It's only try. I will give this to the African director of ACI, sir. This is the African director of the Heart Cry International. Aha, he's the African director. So after the program, please see him, so that anything you would like to discuss with him then you will you will agree at a point thank you very much number six number six number six oh yeah good day sir my question is uh, on david and saul it's just like my family i want to say it's a pity that saul came from that foundation a foundation where people grew up and met idols shrines fear of amadi or her fear of snake giving authority to things around you giving laws and other things if you don't do this this happens you don't do this, this happens and you grew up like that i want to thank god for the life of david that david never grew up from such family i came from such i, I as i am now i'm the oldest once you get to the age of end, you will die so when we have been praying and we'll be praying and we'll be praying and emotion and then circumstances keeps on coming you will soon die like others you will pray and you pray you better return to the family idol you will be hearing strange voice you'll be praying i don't know how you are going to help 
I know that we are many like this, but people don't want to stand up. People want to go to David when they know they are not in David lineage. I am not from David lineage, Joe. Oh, I'm from Saul. So I want you people to help me now. Praise God. Ibere awon mama wa ni pe awon fe kini awon le se ati pe iru iran lowo wo ni won le fun awon nitori pe awon wa lati idile aborisa idile ti o kun fun eru idile to ye pe ni ipele kan awon omo be ma nku won kin dagbaju iye odun kan lo What's beautiful is David invited the son from Saul's family to his table. And God has brought you out so that you can reach back to those in Saul's family Great. and invite them to your table Hallelujah. and eat from the table of the Lord. So God will use you. You are a light to others. My family grew up in all kinds of brokenness my father I led my mother to Jesus a year or two after I had received Christ my father two months before he died he received Jesus I have two brothers amen I have two brothers who yet have not received Jesus but I continue to be a light and open the table to them and God has put an anointing upon you to help your family he has brought you out to help others find a way out it's in Micah it talks about when one breaks through it opens the way and makes it easier for others to break through and I decree over you that God has given you a breaker anointing Amen. to break the way open for Amen. your generations Amen. Amen. to break the way open for your ancestors Amen. for your sisters and brothers and family members Amen. God has released upon you today Amen. a breaker anointing Amen. to break the way open Amen. for your family Amen. hallelujah Amen. hallelujah Amen. Oh yeah. He don't see Barry and one mama wa none week by one bottom we do one shishin. Nitorik be alone to yon one jade kuro ni nui dilebe. Lati jai mole fwa wan toku. Lati la no fwa wan lati jade kuro ni no kunku. One sig badura fumo. Thank you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Number seven. Ayini ayini. Emma. Sir, my questions are two. Number one, why are born leaders facing problems in the course of fulfilling their destiny? For example, Joseph. Joseph faced a lot of problems before he became a prime minister in Egypt. Secondly, most men, men of God, they run after material things instead of looking unto God, unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. What is your piece or piece of advice for us in this country? I bury our mama one Oja Meji, one kini, Diti, and one Nick Bag Bafimala, or Niruri, Shoro, or Jack, and let us one fini, Dojuko, and like a Jisini, we pay Kinni one rock, Bole Fa, Tia one in Russia, a lot of fin leo Tara, Joan Tia Milong. God is using what we go through to shape us and to form us. The name of our church is the Potter's House. And if you understand pottery, you take a piece of clay, you slap it onto a wheel. Then the potter comes with his hands and he puts pressure on the clay to form it. God is using the situations in our life to form us into vessels of honor. So the pressure comes from the hands of the potter. He's pressing it. He's working. He's uh, putting pressure on it. And if there is a stone or a pebble in the clay, it works to the surface. Because then the potter takes the pebble out, continues to work it. Because once a pot is put in the fire, if there is an impurity, 
If there is a pebble there, the pot will shatter. So what God walks us through is to work out the impurities so that when we are fired for our purpose, we don't break. There's a book called God's Generals by a man named Robert Lairdon. In the book, it speaks about people that have been mightily used by God to heal the sick and to see signs and wonders. The sad thing is many of those men of God ended up shipwrecked in their faith. They ended up walking away from Jesus in bondage and addiction. Why? They had an anointing, but not the character to carry the anointing. They did not allow the work of God to shape their character, to form their motivation. They begin to argue over who had the biggest tent, not looking for because they loved the people and loved God but it began to become a competition to feed the pride of the heart of man God uses situations because he's conforming us to the image of his son Jesus God spoke to me he said Ron the goal in life is not ministry it's to be like the one who is the minister, Jesus Christ. Your goal is not success in ministry. The goal of our life is to be like Jesus, to reflect Jesus, his character and his anointing. Not either or, but both. So God, Moses, 40 years on the backside of the desert. David, at 15, anointed to be king. 15 years later, he becomes king of Judah. 22 and a half years later, before he's king of all of Israel. Paul the apostle receives the word that he is going to go to kings and to the Gentiles. He begins, he gets let down in a basket. He gets sent back to his home country. It's 10 years before he ever preaches to a Gentile. What is God doing? He's building a man. He's making the leader. He's making the man. Count it all joy when you fall into various trials because they're working patience in your life. And let patience have its perfect work so that you can be complete and thoroughly equipped for all that God has for you. God uses the things we walk through to form us and to shape us, to make us the people and the instruments he wants us to be. I dawo won na ni wi pe Olorun a ma gba awon ipe ni ja ilaye pe awon ti Olorun lo lati fi tun wa se ohun na ni awon ipe ni ja ilati le so wa di bi iru omo re Jesu won de se awon apere awon kan fun wa ninu bibeli bi Mose ati awon bebe lo When I first entered ministry over 20 years ago I made very little money and I didn't like that and there was a time in my life where I left the full-time ministry and I went into business. Now, if God leads you into business, that's okay. But God was not leading me into business. I went there because I wanted to make more money. God did not allow my business to be successful. God made my business fail. And he did it because he loves me. And in that moment, what happened was I stopped focusing on money and I said, God, I will trust in you. And so I went back into ministry. And even though the money that I made was not a lot, God began to provide for me in powerful ways. And he began to trust me with more and more because I wasn't focused on it and I wasn't going to use it for myself 
as much as I was before. And so God loved me by causing me to go through hard times and transforming my heart. And so well, if, if you are a leader and you're focused on money, if God loves you, he's going to take you through some hard times so that you stop focusing on it. If you have leaders around you that are focused on it, pray for them. Pray that God will break it off whatever it takes. Because I am so grateful that God has given me freedom there. Now, I need more freedom. I need more. And I want more. But we want to pray that God would give others around us freedom in that. Thank you. Uh, this question is in is written in Yoruba language, uh, and praise the Lord. So my name is Sister Favor. I thank God for today's. My questions are three, although most of them have been answered. And you can, if, if most of them have been answered, you can just answer the one. You can just ask not the one as that is not exactly likely. So okay. Okay. Praise the Lord. So I want to know, as childish as the questions may look, I want help as a child. Praise the Lord. So the first one is, uh, how can one really know that he or she is ready? for what you are asking for, for what he or she is asking for, so that you will not ask a miss. Then, what are the practical ways of not allowing these vices you know, to control us? Because it's easy said than done. Theoretically, we can say it, but when the situations really demand those things, how can we really, please, sir? I want like ABC of how to really guide ourselves against those vices. You know what I'm saying? Sir? Yes. So the last one is what are the things that show that one is putting up fire on his own, especially in a new ministry? What are the things that you'll be doing that will show that you are trying to help yourself in a new ministry? Praise the Lord. Question one. <clears throat> the way to know you're ready is to every day walk in obedience to Jesus. If I walk in obedience to Jesus every day, that will get me where he wants me to go. We're always thinking about there, and the way there is to live here. For me to obey Jesus here and take each step, and then as he opens the door, then I know that's what I'm ready for. It's trusting Jesus to lead my life every day. He's going to direct me. He's going to give me the steps I'm to walk in. So how do I get to that place? I follow Jesus every day. I listen to his voice and I respond to what he has for me. The direction that he's giving me. The church that we started we were working, my wife and I, with an organization that helped people who were struggling with some type of addiction. And we would travel on the weekend and we would speak in different churches. 
One of the weekends while I was driving, God, the Holy Spirit, came upon my heart and I pulled aside and I heard God say, I'm going to send you to this city to build a church. I had the word from the Lord. My flesh wanted to do it then, but it was not God. It was not God's timing. So, we remained where we were. We ended up going, working another place. It was actually three years later before we came back to start the church. What happened during that time? God was developing me. He was forming me. He was working in me so that I was ready to take that next step. We need to wait on the Lord and then each day just follow the direction that we've received. There's no pressure then. Because if I'm trying to force to get somewhere, I feel pressure to perform, pressure to make it happen. No. Who will make it? I'm just following the Lord. I told you how old I am. There's something wonderful about getting older is you quit trying yourself to make it happen. There's a level of peace God wants his sons and daughters to live at. The only place to find it, there's a Sabbath rest for the people of God. Where is that found? It's found trusting the Lord, trusting he will lead us and he will guide us. The second is how do we overcome being driven by these different situations. I think that was it, right? Yes. Again, I come back to, it's my relationship with God. You shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. So as I take in the truth of God's word, it frees me from these other things. I build myself up. I strengthen myself by fellowship with the Lord. ABC, the Word, worship, prayer, communion with the Lord, fellowship with other believers, accountability, asking other believers to hold me accountable that I would continue to pursue after the Lord. Those are things for my life that have helped me. Pastor Kirk. Oh, to my feet down, Lord, not me. We pay. I got on my bar or lawn. We can't see my bar on seats on your lawn. Nick, but your lawn, but daddy, what? Pick a nick, back a lane, no lawn. For a daddy or lawn, can't see my telene, but go go at the week pay. I'll mow to talk to tell you, so why do you, Minera? The third question was ways we can make our own fire. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Some ways that we can make our own fire. When we look in the book of Acts and the Spirit of God was moving, we see that the church multiply. Well, what happens when your church is not multiplying the way that you want it to? Do you try to make it happen or you, do you keep seeking the Lord? One of the ways we can make our own fire is to change the gospel so that more people come instead of saying there's a cost to following God, instead of saying God wants you to die to yourself and then he will resurrect you, maybe we say, because we see this in America, we say, come to the Lord, you don't have to change. God's just stay as you are, but, but just add the Lord to your life. And because of that, some churches see an increase in their numbers, but more people are not actually giving their life to the Lord. Maybe I say to people, if you come to the Lord, He's going to make you rich. Just come to the Lord. He'll make you rich. You come to my church. He'll make you rich. That's not the gospel. God may bless you. God may bless your finances. But that is not the gospel. So one of the ways that we change or make our own fire is to change the gospel. 
Another thing that we see is that when God's moving, we see people healed. And we want to pray for healing. But if Brother Ron is suffering, and I pray for him, and he doesn't experience healing, I don't want him saying, praise the Lord, I'm healed. I want him to be honest. And I want him to say, no, not yet. And so I keep pressing in, but I don't try to portray to other people that God is moving in a way that he's not yet moving. So that's a couple ways that we can make our own fire. We want to wait on the Lord, but we want to be persistent at the same time. Thank you. God bless you. Let's jam our hands together for Jesus. Si a babu nkan ba se ri be na ni ka se gbe kale pe won fun apere pe boya won gbadura fe eniyan fe iwosan eni yo ti ni iwosan awa ni ko jade ko dupe po ohun ti ri iwosan o ye ko jade ko so pe ohun si nte si waju ninu adura titi ti olorun yo fi down thank you very much you will agree with, with me that most of the questions in our heart has been answered the truth of the matter is that most questions here have been answered those of us who wrote these questions you know that answers to these questions has come out of the answers they have given to other people please let's put our hands together for jesus yeah, one more time thank you. now we are about to go three more things before we go number one our daddy the General overseer of this ministry is around. They want to say hello to us. And also greet our guest. After that, he will pray for us and also pray for our guest. And then presentations will happen. Pastor, please, you will introduce our daddy to us. Ele que tem com cacico, sou cacico, você da cracata. O cacico, sou Praise the Lord. Ah, praise the Lord. <laughs> we thank God very much today. And like it's been said, I just stood A for him by the time I came out that time. It's like John the Baptist. So he's around now. He's he's been, been, been around, around, he's been going along with us uh, through this claim. It's only that it wasn't available then. It is available now. And uh, do we know his name? Eh? We don't know his name. <laughs> okay. Our GO, the general overseer of this assembly. Eh, eh, so, yeah, eh, so. Amen. Is Prophet Matthew Kendi Omalewa. Amen. 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 And our mommy too is around. Oh, mama, I no want to see wa. A bird don't fly with one wing. So our mommy in the Lord. Oh, mama, I no luwa. Prophetess Omalewa. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Uh, he will, uh, he will, maybe he's having something for us now. He will quickly tell us. And there, thereafter, I was told that he should pray for us. 
so daddy whatever you have for us now thereafter you now pray for us amen amen let's write on our feet let's all of it take time to appreciate god for what god has done in our life as an individual as in our family in every phase of my life and our deep difference assemblies because it is God, not man. To send people from far away America to come down here to sacrifice time and everything in order to preach the gospel, and we thank God for that. Let's appreciate God. Let's appreciate God. Let's thank God for what God has done. Let's appreciate Because it is just God, not man. Let's appreciate it. Let's praise him. Let's thank him. Let's thank him so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, we thank and bless you for what you have done in our life, in uh, this gathering, in every phase of our life, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we are, I really appreciate you for the great and mighty thing you will still we we'll still have a thoughts for us and bro, and because whether the devil like or not, whether the enemy like or you should, we surely be fulfilled in the name of Jesus. Amen. It is well with us. Amen. We thank God for the workers, for the everybody, uh, for the newcomers and everybody. Father, we pray, oh Lord, that whether the devil like or not, whether the enemy like or not, we surely be fulfilled in the name of Jesus. Amen. We are blessed. Amen. It is well. Amen. We are richly blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen. You and your family shall live a fulfilled life in the name of Jesus. Amen. It is well. Amen. You are blessed. Amen. Likewise, we really appreciate our visitors from far away America and all the rest of them. The can people and everybody. Oh, we are really appreciate too. Because whether the devil let or not, whether the emulate or not, we know that you surely be fulfilled in the name of Jesus. We have really thank you for what you have done and for what we still do. We pray, oh Lord, whether the devil let or whether the devil let or we, you will be free in the name of Jesus. Amen. We are blessed. Amen. Thank you, Lugos. For in Jesus' mighty and precious name, in the name of Jesus. Amen.
que é isso aí? Praise the Lord. Uh, we want to uh, present gifts to some categories of people now. I feel for our, our, our category, our canyabu. Eh, mother, my baby. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The first person we want to give this gift to, uh, it, it, I, like we have heard from him, that he first came to Nigeria in 2001. That is Pastor Missy, Pastor Kala Ives. Ah. So, sir. Humiliate. <laughs> <laughs> It's just something like this I'm wearing. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know the beauty of this thing, sir? The Art Cry International is at the back. Then logo, the CAC logo is in front. Yeah. That makes it unique. Unique. We are. We are one. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Who are you expecting to be the next person? Praise the Lord. So the next person we are presenting this to is Pastor Ron Ives. Next time we come, we will wear the shirts with us. Uh, <laughs> praise the Lord. The next person is, I don't know whether he's been coming to our midst before, but he's around today. That's Pastor Kak. Is it well pronounced? Praise the Lord. Miss Pastor Cobb. So clap for Jesus. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The next person is Brother George. Praise the Lord. During the welcome uh, address, I told us that um, uh, Art Cry International is all over the world, and that uh, in Af including Africa. And there's somebody uh, standing in for Art Cry International in, in, in Africa, but resides in Nigeria. And uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's our father, he's a, he's, a, he's a lot of things to control the whole Africa from here in Nigeria. And that individual is Pastor Oyewumi. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, so by the time, I think August, sir. Okay. Uh, Carla will be coming. Okay. That's the wife of uh, Pastor Ron Ives. will be coming in August. And uh, he will wear this thing. She will wear this. 
Praise the Lord. Uh, during the during the question and answer, I think somebody came. He said he came from Lekki, and he want this thing to be brought to Lekki. Well, it will be taken to Lekki maybe after after ten years here. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. Are you blessed today? Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, the ministry through which this man of God came to Nigeria is Heart Cry International. Now, they also have a Bible school of discipleship that is called Versus of Honor. Yesterday was Friday. Uh, the second session for year one was just concluded, concluded yesterday. By the grace of God, in August, Pastor Ron will be coming back to Nigeria with his wife, Pastor Kala. And they will both be teaching at the Versus of Honor School of Ministry and Discipleship. So, those of us who want to register for the school, the new intake will be coming up by August. The form will be available you can come, you can get to this church through, you can get the form in this church through Sister Akinyemi. It's a member of this church. You can get the form through her. Very cheap. And can I tell you, they gave us food two times. It's just one week. So two weeks makes a year. From Monday to Friday is a semester. And then this August, Monday to Friday, will be a semester. Then February, Monday to Friday, will be another semester. That's a year. And it will take, if you want to do both the School of Ministry and the School of Discipleship, it's three years. That's how many weeks now? Six weeks. Very cheap and very inspiring. The handout is free. It's both the handout, both feeding and everything with a very very small token sponsored by some missionaries i mean sorry highly subsidized by some mission you are going to pay a token but it's not going to be much god bless you okay now we are told that the cd for this teaching here this morning the cd is available it's just 200 naira. You can get it from tomorrow. You can get it from tomorrow. Please, if you need any the CD for any of the teachings, you can come here tomorrow. It will be made available. Can we rise to our feet? Okay. That man from Lekki, if he's still around, you can see the African director before you go. Let's thank God for the blessings we have received here today. Let's thank God for the favor of God upon our lives for sending his servant all the way from america to nigeria let's appreciate god for the blessings of god we have been told that in america right now the weather is so cold that people can walk upon uh, uh, snow but right now in nigeria the weather is so hot that even those of us who are living in nigeria some of us are sleeping outside and those who came from america came to nigeria the weather doesn't go contrary on them. Let's appreciate the Lord. Let's give him all the thanks. Let's give him all the praise. Let's say thank you, Lord. We bless your name. Pastor Kaude, come and give us the closing prayer. In Jesus' name, we have given thanks. Eternal King of Glory, we want to thank you for yet another wonderful opportunity of brethren coming together to be sharpened by your word. Thank you for your verses that you have brought down here. Thank you for sustaining them throughout their stay, even up to today. We thank you because you that have begun the good works in them and through them, you will perfect it. Thank you for this ministry that have opened their door to receive us and even other brethren along around the community. We thank you, God, for all that you have done. As we go, go with us. 
Lord, the illuminations that we have received will not be darkened. In the name of Jesus. The new revelation that the new visions that you have received through your word shall be brighter and brighter. Clearer and clearer. In the name of Jesus. Unto your hands, O God, we commit ourselves. Go with us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Let's share the grace. Want to go? Seven graces, hallelujah. Want to go?